I hit screen. So it's, it's, it's live. Everybody. Good to be with you. Good to be back with you in, in, in worship. Um, what a week. That's all I'm going to tell you. Um, I'll share a little bit of it with you in just a little bit. Uh, but uh, as many of you know, we spent a week in Houston uh, for our uh, Lutheran Church Missouri Synod Youth Gathering. That comes up every three years. It's the first time that I went. And uh, in, I've been a, a member of the Missouri Synod all of my life and been a pastor now for 14 years. And I've never gone. So I said, you know what? I'm 45 this year. And then three years from now, I'm probably not going to be up to doing this kind of stuff. So I'm going to do it now. Well, that's what I said before I left. And now I come back and I say, you know what? I really want to go to Louisiana in three years. It was awesome. Um, just an amazing, amazing experience uh, with the nine kids that we took. There was 12 of us total. Um, Alan, you'll appreciate this. We got there okay. Flights were good. <laughs> so, um, you know, that was a big anxiety, I think, for all of us because, you know, not, not to uh, anybody's fault with the airlines, but it's a tough time right now for the airlines. Um, but we were blessed uh, by the folks that took care of us and got us there. Um, but, uh, yeah, so thanks for, thanks for allowing us the opportunity to go. We wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for... For, for you guys and the support and the love that you, that, uh, that you, that you demonstrated uh, to get us there. So thanks for that. It's the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, and we're going to follow the order of service as it's printed before you. Um, we're down a few numbers up, up top. Uh, RJ and Brian, they're in Allegheny this week. Um, so you know my, my passion for Allegheny. Uh, I saw a picture this, this, this week, and uh, so I follow the Allegheny Facebook page, and there was a picture of a black bear crawling through the window of a cabin. I'm like, who? I love seeing them, but I don't know what I would do if one of them came in, and there was somebody in that cabin. So I sent Brian and, and, uh, and RJ uh, a text message this morning, and I said, have a good trip. Uh, hope uh, you secure your windows down. So... <laughs> so, but we're blessed by these guys up top. Uh, I see Nick, I see Holly and Rick. Um, Dylan up there? Yeah, you buried, there he is, there he is. So thank you guys for, for taking care of us this morning. And with that, we're going to start out with our opening song, Hallelujah, Your Love is Amazing. Thanks, 
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake he forgives us of all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ, and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 1 through 10. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre, where he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest 
under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so that you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three cs of finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some, bought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife Sarah, they asked him. There, in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. <laughs> New Testament reading this morning is taken from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 28. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present You are holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regards to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission of God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of his mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, 
so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, Lord, Lord, to Lord, to whom shall we go? go? You, you have, have the words of eternal life. life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Please rise, if able, for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 32, 38 through 42. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed, or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, O Christ. Christ. We confess our faith together now in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please have a seat. Holy, oh, everything. 
My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So I have, a, I, I have to share this with you because it's just how it went. So before I, I left for Houston, I had everything all laid out. I had a sermon ready to go. And I was going to reflect upon the gospel reading for today, which of course we heard very familiar gospel reading, right? Mary and Martha. And if we had to put some some practical stuff to that, what would, what would the practical lesson in Mary and Martha be? Anybody? Married you married Martha. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes there's a little bit of Mary in her too, right? I'm sure. Uh, you know, I, I think the reality is, is that sometimes we, we can get so, so consumed in our work that we forget to sit at the feet of Jesus, right? Uh, all the stuff that we have going, yeah, go ahead. They would have ate after. <laughs> or they would have been fed in a much better way. Yeah. Huh? See? Yeah. Not just a hat rack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't very humble of me, is it? But that, that would be what I would say. Right? And even Jesus himself says that she chose the better to sit at my feet and be fed. Um, you know, and it's there as we sit at the feet of Jesus that we really truly learn servanthood, don't we? You know, so, but anyway, that was the direction I was going. But then I got down to Houston, and for whatever reason, before I, I, I missed this. So the theme of this youth gathering was based upon Colossians chapter 1. Sound familiar? That's what Bob just read. The exact same verses, right? So I'm sitting down there, and I'm thinking about all of this, and I, I just turned, and I'm, for whatever reason, getting ready for this weekend, I, I went over to a website that has our lectionary. And I'm like, oh my, 
it's the same exact reading that we've been reflecting upon all week. So says, man, it would be kind of silly of me not to, not to incorporate that into to, to Sunday's sermon. Some of the stuff that, that, that was experienced down there uh, from Colossians and how that was built up for us this week. So there I was in this cafeteria with probably 700 kids around me and I'm punching out a sermon for Sunday. So if it's not a good sermon, we're going to blame it on the 700 kids who were loud and didn't let me think or concentrate. <laughs> All right. So anyway, Houston, we did it. We made it. Um, it, was, uh, it was a remarkable experience for us as adult leaders. I would say we survived. Uh, and even for the young people who were there, uh, Anna, you would have loved it. The heat index at about 107. It was insane. You'd walk out a door and it was like you hit a wall. Literally a wall. And by the way, anybody who tells you that the heat in Houston is dry heat, send them my way. I have a few things to tell them. <laughs> Not at all dry. And you know, even when people say dry heat, why don't you go ahead and tell the turkey in the oven who has the fan blowing on them? <laughs> at the end of it all, they're still cooked. All right? So... Anyway, um, it was an awesome week. There was so much that was learned. And of course, the, the main reason for us going there, for us being in Houston, was to experience all that this gathering had to offer, to grow, uh, to, to, to build these bonds, to be strengthened in Jesus. But you know something, as we were there, we also had a very limited downtime but in that downtime, we were given the opportunity to kind of explore Houston a little bit and, and kind of see some of the attractions that are in Houston. Uh, and of course, one of the biggest attractions that Houston has is the Space Center, right? So we took a day and, and went to the, the Houston Space Center. Now, I got to tell you, one of, one of the kids that's in the group, uh, Timmy Kiohane is his name. And uh, Trey, you know Timmy. Right, uh, Timmy went, and Timmy, when I found out at dinner one day, is that Timmy and I shared a very uh, a common interest, and that is the movie Tommy Boy. I am a big fan of Tommy Boy, and maybe that has to be my confession before you today, but I love Tommy Boy. Well, Timmy loves Tommy Boy too, and this kid can quote every single line from that movie. My gut hurt, right? I'm sitting at dinner and I couldn't even eat because I'm laughing so hard as he's, you know, he says, brothers don't shake hands, brothers got a hug. I mean, he's got it all down, right? So I thought, being the movie buff that he was, that when we got to the space center, that I would share a movie quote with him. So I said, Houston, we've got a problem. And he looked at me like I had a third eyeball. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Apparently he never saw the movie Apollo 13. So anyway, there we were at the Houston Space Center in um, pretty outstanding, amazing experience. And I have to admit that space science is not something that's typically on my mind. Maybe it should be. But as I was in this museum, I was surrounded by just... Remarkable things. You know, and then that got me thinking a little bit. It got me thinking, actually, about that, that crew from Apollo 8. And you remember they were the, the first, it was the man, first manned ship to orbit the moon and then return. The thought of that journey is a remarkable one to begin with. But what I reflected on more than that and what my mind was really directed toward was their return and what they experienced. So you may remember as the astronauts circled the dark side of the moon and headed home over the horizon rose this blue and white earth and it was garland by the sun. It's beautiful. Remarkable sight. You can only imagine. We've seen pictures, right? Well, as they were experiencing that they didn't start quoting science. They didn't draw uh, quotes from uh, Einstein or some of the, the masterminds of the world. 
Instead, the only words that they could come up with to describe what they were experiencing and what they saw with their own eyes for the first time was this. On that Christmas day, the whole world heard it. In the beginning, God created. And I'm sure, Alan, not to the, that degree, but you experience it every day as you soar up into the skies and you see the beauty and you get a whole different perspective than we do. The magnificence of God's work, his creative hand, God creates. And you know something in the book of Colossians chapter 1, as as St. Paul was, was, was trying to bring some encouragement to the church at Colossae, pointing them to Jesus, this is how Paul summarized it. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, All things were created through him and for him. And these words, by no coincidence, were the theme words of our time in Houston. My friends, our God in Christ is in the business of creating, and he creates beautiful and magnificent and good things. Beautiful things come from his handiwork, right? The earth, the universe, you and me. By the way, we are the crown of his creation. It's humbling to think about, isn't it? And what's also remarkable to think about is to know that our God still has a hand in all of it. That God hasn't left this world to itself or left us to ourselves. But he's still in the business of creating, recreating and even making things new. Making new out of things that maybe we never even imagined could be. Our God is great, and he is our sustainer. He is in all things. But you know something, of all the words in this reading from Colossians, of all of the words in there, what brought the most comfort to me were these words. He holds all things together. That's what Paul says in verse 17. Now maybe, maybe we don't see God in all things. And maybe, maybe that's because we don't put him in all things. I want you to think about your life for a moment and I want you to be honest with yourself. Where is God? Where do you see God in all of it? Every aspect of your life. And my guess is you can probably see him very clearly in certain aspects of your life, but then there are other parts where maybe it isn't so clear. There are places in your daily lives where maybe he's not, and that's not because of him. It's because of us. It's because of how we operate and function. The truth is when we, when we think about our lives, we compartmentalize a lot of stuff. Would you agree with that? We put a lot of stuff in boxes, and when we do that, we almost dictate then the places where, fe- where we feel God should fit in. So this got brought up at the youth convention, and in this remarkable way of communicating during the morning Bible study, and it, they call it a small group Bible study, by the way, and there are 5,000 people in the small group Bible study. Whole different definition of small group. All right. (laughs) But anyway, in this this small group setting, the group leader, he came out with a waffle. And he gave it to the other youth leader. And he said, put the waffle in your hand. So the youth leader held the waffle in her hand. And then this other youth leader took a bottle of syrup and poured the syrup in the waffle. Now, when you pour syrup in a waffle, the syrup kind of goes where you want it to go in a sense, right? It's those little blocks in the waffle. And he said, you see, that's how it is with God. We kind of put him in these little boxes, and he he doesn't go in every aspect of our lives. 
And then he took a pancake. And he said to the youth leader, he says, put that pancake in your hand now. So the youth leader took that pancake and put it, put it in her hand. And then he poured the syrup all over the pancake. It was a mess, right? But in comparison, that's how God wants to operate. God wants to be in all things in our lives. He wants to overflow in our lives. He doesn't want to be just isolated to those little boxes. And I don't know about you, but when I eat a waffle, that annoys me. I want, a, I want the syrup in every box. Sugar-free, by the way. Right? But what a remarkable image that is. Right? We, we can so easily compartmentalize our God that we limit him to only certain aspects of our lives. But the reality is God wants to be in all things. And maybe we don't allow that because we do compartmentalize. Or, or, or maybe, maybe we don't see God in all things when life is falling apart. You know, it's easy for us to see God when times are good, right? But when the tough stuff's happening, maybe... Maybe we aren't seeing him. Maybe that's because we compartmentalize in the first place. But in the stuff, tough stuff of life, maybe we've concluded that he isn't there. We're alone. What we learn from today's reading is that God wants to be in all of our things. And God wants us to know that he is with us in all things. The good and the not so good. Without him, we crumble, right? Without him, we fall apart. Without him, we're a people who have no hope. But with him, we're held together. We're shaped. Life looks different. When Jesus isn't boxed in, when he isn't restricted to certain aspects of our lives, when he's center in all things, it's different. When he's center, we can see his love and his presence and the impact that it has on every aspect of our lives for good. When he's center, we're given this remarkable model for how we operate, how we live. Don't believe me? Take a look at Colossians 3. Read it sometime. Colossians 3, by the way, is, is my, favorite, uh, my favorite chapter for weddings. Check it out. But when Christ is center, his model becomes our model. And when Jesus is in all things, other people begin to see and know him through us because that's what we communicate. We communicate him as we're his hands and his heart in this world. Now here's the next best part. With Jesus in all things, we can see that he is with us, with us then in all things. The joys, the milestones, but even in the incomprehensible the unexplainable, the suffering, the grief, the loss. In a broken world where our hearts are sometimes crushed because of the circumstances that we know, in a broken world where we can so easily find ourselves feeling alone or isolated, crushed or hopeless even, Jesus meets us right where we are. He meets us even in those kinds of things. He meets us with his power and with his strength. He meets us in those things, pointing us to the cross and the grave. His death, his resurrection, and that for you and me, friends, are sure and certain truths that remind us that life wins. And isn't that an important message for us to hear all the time? Life wins with him. In the tough seasons, he also greets us through the people we love. He gives to us a loving community, a church, and that's why we need this place. It isn't just a place where you go to hear long sermons that are over 20 minutes <laughs> on some occasions. But we need this place. Why? Because we need each other. We need him first and foremost, but we need one another. This place is... Uh, the good ship hope. I want you to think about that for a second. It's the good ship hope. Flip it over. What does it look like? It looks like a ship. By the way, this is called the nave. Right? And nave in Latin, navis means ship. 
You, my friends, are in the good ship hope. All of us on board, all of us there for one another, and who's the captain? He's got your beat, Alan. Jesus. And he's your captain too. Right? We need this place. We need this place that we might be surrounded by love and support and that we might know that there are people who are walking with us. You know, when we're in those tough moments, maybe we can't imagine life any different. Maybe we can't fathom any good coming from some of the circumstances. But with Jesus in all things, the burdens, the hardships, the suffering, those things don't have the final say. That's what our faith tells us, no way. Jesus is in control, and with him there's life. Now I'm going to close with one, one little thing, and I thought this was so remarkable. I was like a college student, a seminary student back. I took back in one of the Bible studies, this came out. And I never, ever made this connection. So I want you to follow with me. You can open the Bible if you want, but you can just listen to. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 21, that's where, we, that's where we learn of the people. They were in captivity, right, in Egypt, and now God is preparing them to move out of Egypt and into the Promised Land. Here's what it says in Exodus chapter 12. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go, at once, and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop. I'm going to say that again. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the door frame. None of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frames, and he will pass over. He will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down. Now fast forward to St. John's Gospel, the 19th chapter, verses 28 through 29. Here's what John says. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. and So they soaked a sponge in it and put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant. And they lifted it up to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. Did you catch the common, the common theme in both of those? The hyssop plant. Did you, did you, did you ever catch that before? Me either. But there's something about the hyssop plant. You see, in biblical symbolism, the hyssop plant is one that pointed people to cleansing, life, healing, and newness. And so as, as God's people were in the midst of suffering in Egypt for a long time, it's the hyssop plant that's used to smear blood. A reminder, a symbol of the life that's to come for them. And here as Jesus hung on the cross, they're taken back once again to that time of the Exodus when the people were driven out of Egypt and into the Promised Land. And now, here he hangs on the cross in a new and better Exodus as God will pass all of us over and point us to life and forgiveness in this Jesus who died and rose again. The hyssop plant a symbol of life, hope, healing, newness, salvation. And in Jesus, we have all of that. Life, newness, even when we least expect it. Friends, Jesus makes all of the difference all of the difference. He truly does in all things. May the Holy Spirit enable us to put him in all aspects of our lives that we might see and know his love and his presence in everything. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please stand. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstance. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you, for you. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. In addition to those who are printing the prayers in your worship bulletin, please say a special word of prayer. For Carol Scott, that's Kathy Fergal's sister, who's recovering from some surgery, but also, um, also learned that there are some other health issues going on for her, so please keep her in your prayers. For Kathy Pinozny's cousin, uh, who's recovering from surgery, unfortunately I don't have the name, uh, but that's okay because God knows, uh, God knows her cousin's name. For Ron Vanderwerk, uh, Ron uh, has been experiencing some significant cardiac related issues over the last months. He's having some tests this week, some follow-up tests just to kind of see uh, where, where things are at for him. Uh, anxious days for him, so please keep him in your prayers. And last but not least, we say a special word of prayer on behalf of Nancy Sweeney. A couple weeks ago, uh, we, we brought uh, Nancy up in prayer and she was having some tests and they were basically uh, they found some stuff and they thought it might have been a return of, her, uh, of cancer. Uh, good news, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, there is no cancer. Uh, so yeah, so I was down in Houston and I got this, uh, this text message from uh, Nancy's husband John with big bold letters, no cancer. Uh, and uh, of course my heart just sang. So uh, Nancy is cancer free from head to toe. Uh, we rejoice and give thanks to God for her continued health. We pray. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to God, our Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, making intercession for the church, the world, and for all people according to their need. Lord, thank you for the gift of hospitality by which we may entertain angels unaware or even Christ himself. Give us glad and generous hearts so through our efforts we refresh and gladden the hearts of others. And give us your spirit so that by faith we discern and gratefully receive the hospitality of heaven that you give us in your well-beloved Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Build up your church in mature faith, patient suffering, generous service, and gracious hospitality. Through its preaching, teaching, and worship, reveal the mysteries of your strong, saving love so that many may eagerly seek your face and live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help the people of this congregation, men, women, and children, to rightly balance the loving hospitality of Martha with the loving listening of Mary. Use all that we say and do to lead many people to the one thing needful, the strong saving love of their Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Your servant Paul suffered for the sake of the gospel, as do many Christians in this day. Make them desire to glorify you, to encourage one another, and to be a witness to their Savior who suffered and prayed even on behalf of his persecutors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, for our world, for its leaders and people, for your presence to dwell with us all. Grant that we may know your will and seek your peace. Teach us to sit at your feet, to love your law, to love your gospel, to display your mercy, and to share your blessings with one another. Lord, in your mercy, be the strength and shield of all who stand in harm's way to protect life and liberty. Give them courage and competence. Heal their wounds of body, soul, and mind. Restore them swiftly to their loved ones and help them find new ways to serve you, their communities, and their nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be the light and salvation of all who are afflicted with pain, suffering, or sorrow. Especially today, we pray for Carol, Kathy's cousin, for Ron Vanderwerk. Strengthen their bodies, refresh their hearts, take away their fears, and give them your peace. We pray also for all of those who are printed in our worship bulletin. Bless all who care for them with kindness, gentleness, competence, and common sense. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lives of your faithful servants whom we have known and loved and who have now received a good portion that shall never be taken from them. Help us to comfort those who mourn, to nourish those who hunger for food, fellowship, or forgiveness, and to help one another become mature in faith. Welcome us and all your servants of every time and place into your spacious house where we shall no more be strangers, servants, or guests, but only your dear children who see you face to face at home with you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we entrust our prayers and petitions into your hands, gracious Father, for the sake of your beloved Son, who is Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and his blood. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray together now, just as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the same bread. The cup for which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The cup which we drink is our participation in the blood of Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Please have a seat. Bum. 
come take and eat the body of Christ for you.
Let us pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us the strength of this meal and faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. So before I announce the benediction, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you, uh, well, really a request uh, that, was, that was made by our youth who attended the youth gathering uh, in Houston. Uh, as I mentioned, that at the, each day, uh, we would start out at, at 10 o'clock with the, the Bible study, the small group Bible study, and then the kids would have the opportunity to go over to the convention center, and, and there was an interactive center, there were vendors and all that kind of stuff. But then they had, they had options. They would go to these breakout sessions. Um, and those would go until about dinner time. And then, and then we'd go to dinner. And then after dinner, we would head over to the ball field. And that's where the mass gathering was. So that's where the 20,000 uh, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod members, youth, really, uh, that's where everybody came together. Uh, and there was, there was uh, songs and there was, uh, you know, different uh, speakers on, on, on the... Uh, on the theme for that particular day. Well, anyway, at the end of each of those mass gatherings, they would close with a benediction. And what I learned is that at the, as we were doing highs and lows with the kids on the last day that we were there, one of the things that they said that touched them really um, in a remarkable way was the way that the benediction was done. Um, and so as the benediction was, was being announced, the kids were invited to put their hands out like this. Now, for those of you who've been around for a while, Pastor Blackwell, a number of years ago, introduced that after a conference or something he was at where he experienced that. Uh, but we were, we were invited to put our hands out and then to take and place our hands on our heart. And, uh, and then you take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. So the kids want that to be a new tradition at St. John's. And, uh, well, I don't want to cross them. So I said, sure. I think that's great, and that's their way of sharing something that they took from that youth gathering. That's an expression of their faith, and like we would for anybody, we want to encourage that. Uh, and so, that's what I have you do, all right? So why don't you stand, and I'm going to have you put your hands out. And now I want you to take a deep breath in. Yep, feels good, doesn't it? And then breathe it out. And put your hands on your heart. This heart, your heart, a reminder that you are fearfully and wonderfully made by the hands of your creator. This heart, the very place where our faith dwells, a faith that gives to us hope, peace, a faith that says that you are with us in all things. No matter where we are, where we go, you are there. And so we go now with your blessing. May the Lord go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to be your friend, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come here.
is an endless song Echoes in my soul I hear the music ring And through the storms may come I am holding on to the rock I cling. How can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love? How can I keep from shouting your name? I know I am loved by the King, and it makes my heart want to sing. I will lift my eyes in the darkest night. Savior lives, and I will walk with you, knowing you'll see me through, and sing the songs you give. How can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love? How can I keep shouting your name? I know I am loved by a king, and it makes my heart want to sing. have a quick seat. Good morning again. Good to be with you. Good to be back with you. Good to worship with you this morning. I hope you've been blessed. I hope uh, that you found some some, uh, meaning in my uh, cafeteria sermon. Um, You know, I want to just, uh, um, I know we're running a little over here, but um, it is what it is. Um, Where else would you want to be? Watch your answer. (laughs) Um, But in all seriousness, thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of the nine youth that we took. I know I'm talking a lot about that today, but uh, I think it's important for you to hear this. Um, So on behalf of the nine kids who who went to Houston, thank you. Uh, On behalf of us, the three leaders, uh, myself and uh, Tony uh, Martino and and Dana Besh, thank you for letting us go. I think uh, from my perspective, uh, when, when I went down, 
thing and I'm a leader, you know, so I'm looking after the, looking after the kids and they're really going to be impacted and, and I guess what I didn't really think too much about was how much of an impact it was actually going to have on me. Um, you know, uh, to see the, the faith of these kids just come alive, um, to see that, that the Spirit was just moving the, in them in a, in a real and remarkable way. Um, I, I just want to share with you a moment that I, that I had. Um, so we were in one of the mass gatherings. And in this particular mass gathering, as they were talking about in all things, um, they were talking about how, how Christ is with us in all things, of course, but even in death. Right, he's with us, and so what they had done in this particular in this particular um, uh, moment of the, the the mass gathering was they had the stage set up, and if you're familiar with John 14, in John 14 it says, uh, "Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you?" And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I'm coming back so that you can be right where I am. And so they set up the stage with that. And they had a character, a man that was Jesus, right? Uh, and he was standing at the table. And it was a banquet table, right? Because that's the beautiful picture that Isaiah gives us in Isaiah 25, that there's going to be a fine feast of the best of meats and the finest of wines, a banquet feast for us for all eternity, and what they had is, was pictures of the kids and adult leaders that unfortunately couldn't make the youth convention because fortunately they were called home. So they had all the pictures of these kids and then they had you sort of think about your own situation. And you know, I, I'm, I'm sure you know my year last year was nothing, very pleasing. It was pleasing, lots of pleasing things, but it was a very tough year. I lost my dad. And then I lost my second dad, my grandpa, within eight months. Um, and so all of that was coming fresh into my mind because in a real way I heard that passage from John 14 and I saw, you know, and it just a beautiful image of what it will be and the reunion that we're all going to have. And, and they had all these people moving around and it's just, just a beautiful thing. You know, so I'm, I'm fighting back all my emotions. That's going to be tough because I'm a leader. Right? And I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, and all these emotions are starting to come up in me because during that time when I lost my dad and, and, and uh, my grandpa, I went to work. Right? I didn't conduct the services, but I went to work. I put it all together. You know, so a lot of stuff got put aside, and there I was in a real way in that moment, and their faces were flashing before me, and we're singing, How Great Thou Art. <sighs> right? Almost. And then I feel this arm come around me, and it's Nick Krupa. He's one of our youth. And then all the kids had their arms locked, and they're just swaying back and forth and singing, How Great Thou Art. The spirit was alive. And just in a very special way, you know, a lot of emotions drawn in me in that moment, and God was working through those kids to minister to me. I was ministered to, but I was really ministered to in that moment. Reminded that we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses in heaven, but we're also surrounded by a great cloud right here. People that God is putting in our path to minister to us, to be community, and these young people are a part of that. And I was ministered to do in a way like, like never before. I, 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 can't, I, I can't even begin to explain it to you. So... Very, very good things uh, from this experience. Um, so thanks for letting that happen. Thanks for being the church that you are, the people that you are. Thanks for letting us really experience um, a remarkable thing. Uh, next one comes up in three years. So for those of you who are young, eh, you guys won't be there yet. Uh, but in three years, uh, there'll be another one. It'll be in Louisiana. And that's for, it's, you're eligible to go if you're entering ninth grade and it goes up until you're 19. So I would, I would strongly, strongly encourage all of our youth to experience that. All right? Um, if you didn't follow, uh, if you don't get text alerts from the church throughout the week, I was sending out text messages uh, with updates and pictures. If you didn't get those and you want to see all the posts that I, the reflections that I wrote and the pictures, they're on the website. 
So I would encourage you to check them out and you'll really see uh, the joy on, on, on the faces of those who attended. So, all right, so check that out. It's on the website. Um, Camp Joy, uh, pretty awesome. Uh, I saw when I came back, $5,000 was raised for Camp Joy. Um, that's you, right? That's, that's, that's you, remarkable servants that you are. Um, and all those kids at our Savior are going to be blessed because of your hands and your gifts. So thanks for that. Um, Barb, wouldn't you sell me something else? Oh, yeah, Timmy had, the, Timmy had the shirt on, that's right. Well, yeah, yeah, so he's not here now, but, but we had shirts made, the kids designed for, for our church, so it was pretty, pretty cool. So, all right, I think that's it, um, right? Everybody good? All right, sorry to put you on the spot a little bit today, Alan. You know, that was another thought, by the way, that came into my mind. Uh, you know, thank God for you guys. So if you don't know, Alan's a, a pilot. Yeah, did you figure that out? He, he pilots spaceships. <laughs> um, but, you know, I got thinking about that. Because I'm an anxious flyer. Yeah. Right? I'm, I'm of the, the, the thought that birds are meant to fly, not me. Yeah. So um, I'm an anxious flyer. But you guys get us there safe. God gives you the wisdom to, to get us where we need to be in your, you know, your, flight, your flight attendance. Everybody makes, makes it comfortable and possible for us to get to experience the beautiful creation that God has given us. So thanks for, thanks for you guys. I believe it. I believe it. But it's awesome. We flew on a new one. It was a new plane. Uh, yeah, the pilot came out and talked to us in person, and he goes, this thing's going to hum beautifully. <laughs> so, yeah, well, it was better than the first one. The first one, you felt like the engines were in your ear. But, yeah, but it was great. So thanks for what you do. All right, done. Have a blessed week, everyone. Go in peace, serve the